Good, good afternoon. I am uh, Yves Louvard coming from Massy, France. I present my uh, 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 colleagues here, uh, Bon Kwon Koo, famous, uh, from Korea, uh, Thierry Lefebvre from Massy, same centers as me, and Dr. Duke Wu Park, also from Korea. Yes. So we are here to discuss um, uh, bifurcation disease, of course, and uh, uh, technique or concept. So we present you first some selected slides. This is a meta-analysis done by Marco Zimarino, drug, drug, uh, um, uh, randomized trial and non-randomized trial, showing that there are more uh, DES thrombosis when you are doing a, a two-step technique. And this is translated in, uh, in myocardial infarction, and both are related. I mean, myocardial infarction are mainly related to DES thrombosis, not to periprocedural MI. Uh, another, another trial is showing uh, something which is uh, a bit different. This is a new meta-analysis done by Gao, uh, showing that no difference, in fact, between uh, 1 versus 2 stent for uh, uh, death, uh, MI, uh, stent thrombosis, and the intervention. But I think uh, I added this slide because I think in the Gao analysis, there is at least one wrong study, which is this one. As you can see, at six months, exactly 240 days, you have an endpoint, which is a, a cumulative survival without intervention. And you can see that most of the reinterventions occurred on these 240 days because of a systematic coronary angiography. And we know since a long time, Ben that doing a, 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 an endpoint, a clinical endpoint, after a coronary angiography is a mistake. You have to put the clinical endpoint first and then the coronary angiography. In fact, this is one study, cross and perfect, when a part is dedicated to big vessel, another one, another part is dedicated to small vessel. For the big vessel, routine fin final kissing or leaving it alone, uh, no difference in, uh, in uh, uh, endpoint, and cross technique versus single stank, also no difference. So this is uh, maybe try to accredit that in in, in the era where we are now, a single and double stenting is uh, the same. These are the list of, uh, partial list of uh, double stenting technique. Uh, I have to say that uh, you see, we see here one culotte, but in fact there are two culotte techniques. One is beginning with the main vessel, it's part of the provisional stenting strategy, and the other one is beginning with the side branch, which is slightly different technically. Uh, you can see here that uh, we have one stent, one stent uh, the so-called SKS, which is, uh, uh, I think, a salvage technique only. And uh, I won't say a word about uh, the dedicated bifurcation stent. The only one which is still living is the Triton. So any different uh, outcome with a two-stent technique? I think I want to introduce in red here uh, a concept that was developed by uh, Bon Konku, uh, saying that uh, if this trial, one versus two, I mean, especially the first one on small vessels, are not showing any, any difference, it is because the side branch was not clinically significant. So, uh, uh, treated or not, ristenose or not, doesn't matter because there is no clinical uh, uh, consequence. So, uh, uh, about the two different, uh, about different two stand techniques, uh, we can uh, say that probably they are uh, indicated in different indications, I mean different angiography pro probably. We have very limited uh, data, only few uh, randomized trials, and generally the differences are uh, quite small on soft endpoint, let loss, TLR, or branch stenosis. This is about uh, the use of uh, BRS in bifurcation. After implantation of a stent across, uh, in the main vessel across the side branch, I think it's I see it that it is recommended to do a mini kissing balloon inflation. I have to say that in bifurcation club, we don't consider this as the first uh, uh, thing to do, or we do a kind of uh, snuggle balloon inflation. Uh, we would prefer probably to do a, a side inflation followed by a main inflation to correct uh, the distortion created by the side branch uh, dilation. Second is a, is a concept. I mean, looking at what is a bifurcation, how to treat it. And this is a, a slide, it's not from uh, Dr. Koo, who did that already a long time ago. A majority of uh, 
legend on the side branch after main vessel stunting are in fact by FFR analysis not significant. This is a bigger trial, a bigger study than the, the one upon Konku, but this is a notion which are, we, we have also in the left main uh, from the same team. Here is the sensibility and the specificity of uh, FFR to diagnose, to diagnose uh, the uh, significant of the stenosis in the side branch. And again, uh, we are back to the side branch significance. Uh, looking at the ischemic burden, and we are looking, especially the team of uh, Dr. Ku is looking for uh, a, a simple way to identify the side branch that, that are clinically or will be clinically significant. And this is a real challenge. Uh, recently, was published a paper from Korean uh, team saying that the, the significant side branch has a long one more than 73 millimeters, which is certainly difficult to measure, at least on an angio. And here I, I see like uh, this is um, the recommendation for a, a good follow-up based on IVUS after left man stunting. And it looks like a bit like the, the fractal law showing that uh, a bifurcation is not a big tube and a small tube, but this is a, a clinic, an entity, uh, anatomical entity and physiologic entity with three different diameters. And this is a kind of uh, a way to say that uh, maybe one of the options we have, the best option we have when we treat bifurcation lesion, is to reconstruct the initial anatomy. Here, this is the surface of low wall shear stress, which is a pro-heterogenic factor in different scenarios at the end of the procedure. And uh, the most limited surface is 1.8% A, and this is the initial anatomy of the bifurcation. So now we can uh, go uh, uh, for discussion. The three of you, uh, which uh, are, you, are you doing frequently to stand technique? First question. Second question, which of this uh, to stand technique you prefer? You first. Yes, uh, the, you know, some, the, in our catheter, uh, but uh, usually we try to uh, the select the provisional stenting if the, if the side branch is, uh, uh, seems like uh, some, uh, uh, not significant. But sometimes the, the big diagonal branch and also the distant left main branch is ostium was tight. At the time, we the initially the plan to initial two stand uh, technique, but is uh, regarding remaining the region is the side branch was not so big. It's just uh, the not seems like a not significant uh, myocardium. We're gonna try to initial the simple st standing. The after standing crossover, there was uh, some significant narrowing of the side branch. We then we do the FFR for checking of the functional significance of the side branch for left main region. Uh, the so many case uh, is the true bifurcation region. We initially planned the two stand techniques. And two stand technique for you cannot cannot be the provisional strategy. Yeah, right, right. It's just you know the sometimes the uh, the for the distal main region is the circle initial uh, looking was good. Is so we gonna do the uh, provisional stenting? But it's a initially very tight region, true bifurcation region for distal main region. We uh, treat the. Uh, a plan that uh, which, which, technology which double static technique you use that, in this case? Uh, in in Asian medical center, we prefer the cross technique. Sometimes so, do so called DK cross technique. Yeah, it's a so called yeah. DK cross technique. And then second was tap technique, and sometimes use gullo technique. Is never use the uh, the kissing technique, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thierry. Uh, so it's, it depends, but in general, in uh, non left man bifurcation lesions, we uh, use. Uh, uh, two stents in less than 10% of cases. And for left man, it's about 10 to 15. Uh, so, it, of, of course, it depends on the type of lesion. So, uh, when there is uh, no side branch lesion, we never use, uh, uh, we always use a provisional approach. Uh, when the side branch lesion is very short, we also use a provisional approach, except if the access toward the side branch is very difficult. And for left men, in the majority of cases, we use also provisional. And uh, uh, if there is a significant lesion of the circ at the end of the procedure, uh, very significant, we always open the, the vessel uh, and do a T-stenting, 
not a tap. We do tap only when we are not sure about the positioning of the stent and uh, the side branch uh, scaffolding. So we prefer we prefer to avoid uh, having the protrusion of the stent in the main vessel. Juan? So for the non-left main bifurcation, I would say around 5% for two stenting, and left main it's around 15 to 20%. And for the two stenting strategy, personally, I think the risk of side branch occlusion after main branch stenting is the uh, first condition to determine the two systematic two stenting approach. So for that purpose, so that the ACS patients or the ISR patients, when the risk of, especially for left main, when I think that the, it's too tight or the, the vulnerable plaque with the high risk of the side branch occlusion, and I started with the two stenting technique. And for that reason, the most preferred technique for two stenting is a, is a crush, mini crush, not DK crush. DK crush, not DK no, crush. Not DK crush, mini crush. And for the elective systematic two stenting, I like yellow stenting. Thank you. So now we, we move to the, the BLS. Uh, probably you know that uh, since uh, recently, the CE mark in Europe has changed for this uh, BVS. And we are now supposed to, we are coming back, in fact, we are supposed to treat, to use it only in, uh, in the context of uh, clinical study. So we are no more allowed to, to put this, uh, this stent in uh, not only bifurcation, in every lesion. Mm -hmm. So we have discussed many times in, uh, in the bifurcation club the use of, uh, of BVS. Yes. Uh, what is a, 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 is a bifurcation lesion a, re, a good for you, three, a good target for, for, for the BVS, BVS alone, BVS plus BVS, or BVS plus DES? Personally, I think that I'm not very fond of using uh, <coughs> BB, BRS for bifurcation. You know, and for other lesions? For, for, for the for, other lesions? For other lesions? Theoretically, I like it, but practically, I don't like them much because that the, it's good to have a... So we're, we're not going to have a stent strut anymore, but we have to wait for three years to guarantee the safety. But the, and the other issue is the whether we can generali generalize those PSP and strict imaging criteria for all the interventional cardiologists. Mm -hmm. For the experienced operator, I'm completely fine with using the BRS, but we learned from the several registries that if it is done by unexperienced operators, it can also increase the risk of heart endpoint. So that the, I think we should be very cautious and when you decided to use the BRS for your practice, you should be very good at lesion pre preparation and very good at uh, have an optimal procedure outcome. So that, that's my uh, learning point from these recent clinical yes. trials. Here's, um, a lot of BVS. <laughs> yeah, right, right. A lot of BVS. Uh, is I definitely, the, we are some, the transition zone is uh, the, the BRS used for more some complex region, including bifurcation region. I remember the last year TCT meeting, there are a lot of challenging debate about PRS use for bifurcation region. Now they have the release of observer two, three, either trial is definitely shrinkage of the, the PRS use for complex region. It's a previously that we sometimes use the PRS as a non lamb main, the simple bifurcation region. Side branch is not so big. Sometimes the side branch is big. We try to, uh, the, you, you mean the, the small mini, Snuggling, mini, uh, yeah. the snuggling technique, or mm -hmm. sometimes I put the drug loading stand for side branch and put the BRS for main branch and then the snuggling final kissing. It's a result, it's, a, it's okay, yes. Yeah. So, but this, nowadays there was some, a lot of some safety concern. We just uh, try to put the more the simplified region the, except the publication region, yes. For kissing, you do a, a standard kissing or you, you put one balloon inside the side branch and the main uh, inside the proximal main? Uh, to avoid overlapping, that's... Uh, yeah, right, right, right. Just, uh, we, yeah. You're going to suggest that the snuggling is just exactly positioning of the side branch ostium to the main branch stem. It's not what the protrude is main yeah. branch. Yeah. Uh, what, what about uh, the maximum size for side branch balloon dilation? Yeah, for you? just uh, 10 or 12 is we're going to try to keep the nominal pressure 
not the over, over in place more than 14 ATM, it's so less than 12 to 10. Yeah. And for the, for the diameters, you put a, a three, a three millimeter balloon in the side branch? No, I, I won't do that. <laughs> Thierry, 2.5? 2.5, 2.5. You can, yeah. uh, you can in a 3 o you can. Uh, it was tested by John Ormiston. Uh, yeah. But not uh, at high pressure. Exactly, low pressure only, but you can. Yeah. I think, uh, uh, as you said, uh, BVS uh, can be used in bifurcation, but uh, in expert hands. It's very important. Uh, we learned from the uh, recent meta-analysis of Collet that uh, the main predictor of MACE after BVS is percent diameter stenosis. Yeah. I think it's crucial. So it's very important, like we do for metal stents, yeah. to have a perfect result. Uh, so good preparation, good post-dilatation, good sizing. And for bifurcation, I think it's relatively simple if you treat simple bifurcation. Mm -hmm. So I will not do a complex bifurcation uh, uh, with uh, BVS, but simple when I can anticipate that I will need a stent in the side branch in less than 5% of mm -hmm. cases. Mm -hmm. So very simple lesion. Uh, and the strategy is uh, to have two wires, stand the main branch, do a pot to uh, optimize uh, proximal position, then open the strut toward the side branch with a non-compliant balloon, and then do another pot. Mm -hmm. But I don't do kissing balloon inflation mm -hmm. because I think the snuggle kissing is not so simple. Positioning the two balloon mm -hmm. to avoid the uh, mm -hmm. uh, rupture yes. of the BVS is not easy. So also you, are, you have to avoid uh, to dilate the balloon distal to the to the state in the side branch. So yes. yes. I think so it's, uh, it's, it's not easy to perform. Yeah. So pot side pot, I think it's uh, for BVS is really a very good option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I have one question. You know, some I. Uh, the, today morning, I, re, I uh, received your lecture about the bifurcation technique. The, your, the, the review article is uh, published the Jack Intervention last year, mm -hmm. Contemporary Bifurcation Approaches. Uh, I think the most uh, emphasized on technical issue is the POT yeah. technique. Is that yes. there a liberal use of the POT technique? So I definitely agree the frequent the use of the POT for complex bifurcation stenting, but this, I'm not Concern. I, I'm not uh, the sure. Is uh, you know some simple provisional stenting. The ending procedure was part. Is I'm some concern about the final part. Is some increase of the risk of the you know some carina shifting to side branch or something ah, like it that. It depends of it depends of the position. Uh, it's a position of the of the balloon when you inflate to perform the pot. Mm -hmm. So the, the pot, you, you of course you chose the diameter of the proximal main vessel, mm -hmm. and you have to put, the, to put the marker in front of the carina. Mm -hmm. But there is a problem that for different balloons, the position of the shoulder of the balloon and versus the marker is mm -hmm. not the same. Mm -hmm. So you have, I think, uh, if you are using always the same, the same uh, balloon, you know where is, the, where is the marker versus the shoulder, the, mm -hmm. the tapered part of the balloon. Mm -hmm. So, of course, if you, if you dilate to distal, you are pushing the, ca the carena, mm -hmm. and if you dilate to proximal, mm -hmm. you have uh, you you are not optimizing the uh, the core of the bifurcation there, mm -hmm. and uh, you are m maybe not pushing the also the metal towards the side branch mm -hmm. before uh, mm -hmm. before crossing to the side towards the side branch mm -hmm. in distal cell. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think uh, it's it's very very uh, very pre precise technique to yeah. perform. Okay. But uh, this, this technique is uh, very useful. So it's a, for, for us, it's a simplification of the bifurcation mm -hmm. technique because uh, you respect the fractal law. So you, stand, uh, uh, you use the stent according to distal reference. Then you oppose the stent proximally with the pot. Mm -hmm. And this facilitates access toward the side branch because the struts are bigger mm -hmm. at the level of the, of the side branch. Yes. Uh, so it helps to go through the stent strut mm -hmm. to go dis in the distal strut it's uh, really easier. So that's why we move to this technique of uh, pot, mm -hmm. which is a recommendation of the European mm -hmm. Bifurcation Club since, um, I don't know, five years. Um, and we are happy to see that, uh, to receive a clinical validation from Korea. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. By yeah. Dr. Gwon. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. It I was uh, in the, uh, he looked at the, the predictors of, uh, of the MACE uh, and uh, in the, with spots, you decrease by 50% the, mm -hmm. the risk of mace. Oh, great. 
So I think it's, so there, there was two uh, 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 new drug editing stands, second generation drug editing stand, uh, pot and uh, non-compliant balloons. Mm -hmm. I think the, the, the customer part is very important, but one, as you pointed out, that the, once we ruin the fractal ratio, over dilating the distal main branch, there's no, no meaning of part because the corona is already shifted. Yeah, right, right. So yeah. that the, just doing part it may have a less meaning yeah, right. than starting with the size of the stent fitting to distal main branch not having Karina shift already, then part has a meaning, right? Mm -hmm. So once Karina has been moved away to the oh, yes. wall, yeah. jail, so the part has you know, almost meaningless. Yeah, you right. also just make uh, more injury to yeah, the proximal right, part right, of the right, vessel. Right, right, right. So it's good to say the part, but it is very important to uh, illustrate the true meaning of the part mm -hmm. from the beginning, mm -hmm. right? So once you ruin the fractal mm -hmm. ratio, mm -hmm. then the there's no way to mm -hmm. re reconstruct it, mm -hmm. it to a narrow portion. Okay, great. Yeah, I, f I follow you, but uh, I think uh, sometimes you can make mistake one millimeter mm -hmm. to this tone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can move the car in. So uh, right. I think that uh, when we are dealing with uh, a clinically insignificant side branches, mm -hmm. uh, f I like very much to, to finish by with a kissing balloon. Mm -hmm. Because if you use uh, two balloons, with the diameter of the two distal vessels, you are repositioning the carena mm -hmm. at the good position to share the flow. Mm -hmm. Proportional to, as you know, proportional to the amount of myocardium. Mm -hmm. So the diameter is proportional to the amount of supported myocardium. So it's very important to put the carena in good position. Mm -hmm. So this is part maybe of the, the, the concept approach. I mean, uh, treating not a big tube and a small tube, mm -hmm. treating uh, an entity which is uh, not only anatomic, but also physiologic, which is the bifurcation. Mm -hmm. so how to, bet, to best uh, approach this, uh, uh, this concept? So we speak about, uh, uh, maybe a bit, we begin with Ivers. So I won't speak to, to Thierry because, as you know, in France now, we are very poor after, uh, after uh, difficult years. So we, we, don't, we are not using frequently Ivers. Oh, really? Oh, so yeah. I know that in, uh, in uh, Asian country, in Japan, in Korea, you are using uh, uh, nearly systematic IVUS analysis before bifurcation stenting. Mm -hmm. I presume, Quan, that you are not using that when the side branch is small. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So it's for, we are speaking here about the bifurcation that are not only, where we don't not only protect the side branch, what we do for very small side branch. So for uh, a clinically relevant side branch, you, you use systematic IVUS before, uh, before uh, stenting a bifurcation? Uh, and what is not, the main reason? Not, not the main reason not, why you use not systematically. So that the it's so that I, I don't think that the so that if I plan to perform a you know two stenting strategy, definitely I was guided. But the until I reached the two stenting st strategy, when I started with the provisional strategy with the two kissing balloon, mm -hmm. because I learned the rules mm -hmm. how to. I run the steps, so that the, I think it's it's still okay. Mm -hmm. But the, for if <coughs> there's you know more and more complexity, then it's time to use the IVUS. Yeah. But I I don't think IVUS can be generalized for all. So five not people. systematic. No, no. And uh, just uh, uh, we we are not using IVUS, and we we are using we measure frequently the three diameters. We try to. You know, when we have two diameters, you can calculate the third one. So, mm -hmm. he, and we have today dedicated software to do QCA. Mm -hmm. And the 2D uh, QCA, even 3D QCA, is very close in terms of measurement of diameters to, to what is done with IVUS. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, the way uh, we can defend us. But the, the, real, the real reason is that it's very expensive mm -hmm. to, to make IVUS for all the patients. So I, I, have, I have to add that uh, Regularly in big registry, we find that non-use of IVUS mm -hmm. is a predictor of bad outcome. Yeah, right, right. But we, we, we are still missing yeah. a randomized trial. Yeah, right. We had a non-bifurcated yeah, lesion recently. Yeah. Illumin 3 mm -hmm. was a randomized trial and was not, conclu yeah, was not right. conclusive. No difference yeah. between IVUS guided and not IVUS guiding. Yeah, right. So do you think we need a, a, a randomized trial yeah, right. to prove that it's necessary to... Yeah. 
Definitely. Do you use IBUS? Yeah, you know, some, the, some of the clinical trial is IBUS XL trial is uh, targeting some long lesion. Is, uh, there was a, the hard end point was no difference, IBUS versus no IBUS, just the difference of the repeat revascularization. Also, some left main, you know, some very the catastrophic region use and non-use of the IBUS. Uh, IBUS was always good, but is there are many vulnerable to limitation. If you, you, we usually in real practice do IBUS more electable patient, more stable patient, you know, some more tubular patient for PCI. Don't use IBUS uh, some high risk patient, some shock patient or something like that. So because of that is that there is always IBUS uh, guided PCI was better than the angiographic guided PCI. So I think, uh, I mean, the, there is no limited random trial. So we don't know exact answer. Is uh, IBUS uh, really improved the uh, survival for complex patients? Uh, we need more additional data, yes. The, the difficult situation for that kind of randomized trial is that the, what can be guided by the IBUS? Mm -hmm. You yeah. can say that it is yeah, IBUS right. guided, so that the, for the non bifurcation what are, reason. What are you looking for? What is the most important information you get from the IBUS? Right. The so diameters? Uh, yes, so that uh, you mean pre intervention? Yeah. So it's a, it's a kind of distribution of plaque, diameter, and carina location. That kind of you know, things can be derived from the IVUS. But I think that for you, it's OK, because you're overcoming <laughs> the limitation of angio yeah, by right, your right. experience and knowledge. Right, right. But you, you, you know, we, uh, when we start doing left men uh, more than 20 years ago now, uh, we decide to use IVUS systematically, mm -hmm. because we had to learn. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, the first 50 years, years, yes, years by years, then we decrease the use of IBUS. Yes, yeah, so you know that already. Yeah. Yes, no. and, and yeah. when we had the new colleagues mm -hmm. coming, mm -hmm. uh, we decide to r start again using IBUS just see, for the learning. I understand, yes. Right, right, right. And today, so, today we, we do, do not use IBUS except if there is something strange. I see, uh, I see. I think yeah. it's very we important. We are not recrossing or something. We do see, not I understand see. something. So we are very close to the end use of this uh, interview. We have to say something on FFR because this country is the place of FFR for bifurcation. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we discussed that already many times with you. In, uh, in, uh, so you did this trial a long time ago, this analysis of the, of the side branch. Now we know that majority of this lesion created, not pre-existing, but created by the implantation of the main vessel stent are non-significant. So is it important today to, to be sure on individual case that we, this one is significant, this one is not significant. So how to perform, do you perform this, uh, this analysis uh, always or sometimes and when? So it's, so it's, it's the same for IVA. So I, I learned a lot from FFR measurement. Mm -hmm. So I know that the, it's not that significant, even have a 60% stenosis. Mm -hmm. So that the, nowadays I don't measure FFR for jail side branches, for any side branches that much, unless the patients are enrolled in some clinical studies. So because we already know. Mm -hmm. But the issue is that the, you know, when we first started the side branch studies, people were quite worried about leaving that branch alone. But now I worried about people saying that the all side branches, there's no functional significance, yeah, right? right? right. There are some branches who have a functional significant diffuse narrowing, calcified lesion, and which, sub which supplies the large myocardial mass. We have to care about that kind of branches. But they're kind of saying that, the, okay, according to Dr. Gu's studies, side branches are always okay. But I, now I would like to persuade the p people that the, there are side branches which are functionally significant, yeah. right? So that we have to be balanced mm -hmm. using those uh, data from what we have learned from the study. But uh, for your, uh, questions, I don't measure FFR that much in non-left main side branches. Also Thank you. So very close now to the end. To finish, I will propose us four principles for treatment of bifurcation lesion. First, try to identify the uh, clinically uh, um, relevant side branches. And this is, this is not easy. It has been proposed some diameters. Uh, Cohen proposed new score. Mm -hmm. Now we have this 73 millimeter long, which is unusable in practice. So the first principle, try to identify the, this side branch. All others are dedicated to protection with a possibly uh, crossover to stent. Second, minimize the number of stents. So never put 
Never begin with the side branch when you have a simple lesion in the main vessel. Third, fully deployed and well uh, and uh, and uh, uh, avoid overlapping. Mm -hmm. So minimize prolapse, especially at the level of the carina. And fourth, uh, try to respect the, uh, the, anat the initial anatomy of bifurcation, mm -hmm. but kiss are done for that. And why not Ivers are done for that? Do you think that these four principles can be uh, useful in your uh, daily practice? Yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. yeah. Yes, I agree. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very much. I appreciate it.